Remember Tony Blair launching the Education White Paper last month? We must put parents in the driving seat for change. But do parents want to be in the driving seat? And do teachers want that? That's our talking point, parent power. Hello and welcome to Talking Point, the new programme on Teachers TV dedicated to honest debate about the issues that matter to teachers. In this edition, our specially invited panel of teachers and parents will be debating parent power. Parents and parent power dominated the recent education white paper. The word parent appears more than 450 times in this document, three times more often than the word teacher. Parent power is seen as crucial to creating more good schools. But is parent power something that teachers should welcome? Saber Malik has been exploring what the government's vision means in reality. With courage to reform further, by pace placing the parent and the pupil right at the heart of the system, we can now make our schools truly world class. The government has a vision for our schools and the buzzword it's using is parent power. In the vehicle that's the latest white paper, Parents are placed firmly in the driving seat, but this idea of parent power is not a new one. In the leafy suburbs of Twickenham, new parents are being shown around Orleans Infant School. What they're signing up to is a school where mothers and fathers make a real contribution. Welcome to Orleans. Um, the purpose of the tour today is to give you a sense of the school and have a look around. So for those of you who... In addition to raising funds, parents help out in the classroom. This benefits them as well as the pupils. I like to be in school to see what's going on and to understand how my children's child has been taught and what's happening. But I also think it's important because it gives the school extra resources. You're able to dedicate that time. It's not a problem. It's not a problem for me because it's my second child and my other, um, both the children are at school full time. The last Ofsted report commended these parents for their involvement both inside and outside the school. It concluded that such support impacted very positively on their children's learning. For the head, working with the parents is crucial to the school's success. A regular newsletter keeps them updated. I also remind them all the time that we are a very open school and that they must come in if there's any issues. And I think if you are an open school and you keep those line of communication going, and I'm out in the playground every morning at the end of the day, so parents quite informally will come and say to me, oh, I've seen this, or what about that? I think it's much easier then to make it clear that they know they're being listened to. A primary school in an affluent area may be just the place where you would expect dialogue between parents and staff, but head 20 or so miles east out of Twickenham to a secondary school in a less well-off suburb, and parent power has yet to pack a punch. George Green School is located in the borough of Tower Hamlets, one of the most deprived areas of London. The number of pupils eligible for free school meals is well above the national average. It's also a racially mixed school. The head has had problems getting parents involved in the school. She has had to headhunt parent governors. What's behind this reluctance? There's a lot of reasons, and quite complex reasons. Some of those are to do with the, the, the lives that people lead. They may be working one or two jobs. They may not have had a good education or a good experience of education. They may have English as a second language. But, and in fact, or they may be you know, put off by the professional speaker. It's dull. Did you get any parents at all? And the solution? Well, the school has taken on this woman, Dawn Spiteri, to try and stir parents. In advance of the white paper, she has already set up a parents' council. Issues of behaviour and further education have been discussed by parents. What we're trying to do is give them ownership of that, give them ownership of their own council so they can set agendas, if they've got issues, for them to come to us and ask us if we can give them information or um, outside agencies, whatever it is, to give them information so they can have a say with what's going on. Girls, don't you see all that food on the corridor, please? You're in the common room. For some parents, having their voice heard is vital. Angela is a supervisor whose daughter attends the school. And you're, you're, you're a parent here? Yeah, and I've got a daughter here, yeah. And why is it important for you to get involved with the school? I think it's very important because you like to know what your kid's doing 
Um, even, you don't want to know, just know when they're in trouble all the time. You want to know what they're doing, you know, if they're good and whatever. So you like to go to meetings and things to see what's happening. Criticism that the white paper may have swung the pendulum too far in favour of parents has come from an unlikely quarter, the very organisation that represents parent-teacher associations. The term parent power, I think it's the power which is a divisive term. You know, what we would always say that they should, which should be encouraged is partnership. And power is not, power is normally just one person having the power over another person, or one organisation over another organisation. And therefore, it's not a true partnership. And where it works best, it works through that partnership. The other half of that partnership, the teachers and head teachers, also have reservations about parental influence and worry that too much of it may undermine their authority. I think there are a very few parents who may interpret this word parent power in the wrong way and feel that they can come into school, throw their weight around, take over from the professionals and so on. And that would be a great shame when on the whole we have very good relationships going with parents. A former union leader recently warned that giving irresponsible parents more power is like putting an alcoholic in charge of a bar. With an increase in the number of reported attacks against teachers, there are concerns that parent power might actually lead to parent force. He was hammering and kicking away at it and his eyes were right up against the window of the door and a memory I've still got today is seeing his eyes, even as I'm talking to you, staring at me through that door. A minor dispute about school uniform led to a parent attacking Phil Baker two years ago. Suffering post-traumatic stress, he was forced to leave his job after over 30 years in teaching. He now has strong views about parents' roles in schools. And my hope is that parents realise that, that by sticking up for their child against the school, that is doing great harm. We've got to work in partnership. And I don't want to hear anything about parent power. I want to hear about school and home partnership. And I believe the government is totally wrong to raise again this issue. But the government is quite clear that parents should have greater power to drive the new education system the white paper is designed to create. It proposes that schools should set up parent councils and involve them in decisions on behaviour, sex education, school meals and in setting the school's vision. The aim is that parents should have a real say in how schools are run. To back this up, the white paper also creates a statutory duty on school governing bodies to seek the views of parents and respond to them. It also promises that all parents will get reports on their child's progress at least three times a year. It pledges to create a new right for parents to complain to Ofsted, possibly triggering an immediate inspection. And it proposes to establish a framework so parents can set up schools where they would dominate the governing body. It's all there in black and white, or rather the government's blueprint to make the British education system world class. But how will it work in practice? Can parents and teachers work in a loving and equal partnership? Or will parent power be the kiss of death? Tom Bow, uh, Zeba Malik collected a spectrum of opinions on parent power there. You teach in a secondary school. What, what's your position on parent power? I think anything that's going to get parents into schools and into classrooms and involved in the education has got to be a good thing. And whatever we call it, and uh, whatever form it takes, if it's bringing parents into schools and into classrooms and, and getting them involved in the education um, of their child, then, then it's a, a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Does that already happen in your school? To some extent, yes, absolutely. I think we're quite good at that. I think w with any reform, you know, good schools will already be doing it. And yes, I think in our school we have good relationships with the parents. I think the parents are, are in the school, they're involved, not only on the governing body, but also, you know, in an everyday basis inside school. And, and I would hope that I have a conversation with, with parents of all the children that I teach that's more than just a, a parent's evening report on how the child is doing. So parents do have a real say, to, to, to quote the government's words? Well, uh, yes, I would hope so. I what mean, does that mean? <laughs> it means that if your, if your mum is the person who decided that uh, food shouldn't be taken out of the canteen, then when you're caught eating in the corridor 
and the teachers ask you politely to go back and eat in the canteen, you can't then swear at that teacher and run off. You can't have a go at the teacher for that. You can't be upset at that rule because it, it was your parents involved in setting it up. And when word gets, gets back, it's not, it's not one party against another. The school and the parents are setting up these rules together. They're setting up what goes on in the school together. And students can then take part in that knowing that they don't have a divided loyalty, you know, telling them what to do. That sounds like quite unreserved support for the notion. Terry Chryson, you're a, a principal, a head teacher of a school in Essex. Are you as a supporter well, of I the I wish idea? it worked like that all the time. I think the problem is that sometimes you have some parents, and, and there's a tremendous, a vast majority of parents, want to get involved with their children, want to help their children do well in school, and want to support the teachers. But there's a significant minority who actually will abuse the position of having their say and will actually undermine what teachers are doing, even when they're faced with the facts. And I've had issues in school where there have been behavioural issues, and we've called it on CCTV, and I've said, here it is on TV, you know, I'm telling you this, and they, they still refuse to believe me and insist on coming to see the CCTV imaging. And then they're, they're a little bit surprised but that's after they've then complained to the local authority, to Ofsted, Uncle Tom Cobley and all, but they never retract those. And I think there's some parents who just abuse every opportunity to have a go and bash a teacher, not, not just uh, in reality, mm. but also metaphorically. And I think what we have to do is we have to make sure we have good systems and structures to make sure that those people who are going to be the bully parents are not allowed to take a part, an active part, in running schools. And do you think the proposals in the white paper address your concerns? I don't think, I think they're a bit mixed. Uh, the, the issue, I'm, I'm a little bit sceptical about uh, what's said in the white paper on parent power. There's some really good stuff in, yeah. the, in the white paper. Um, but on the parent power issue, it, it, it fails to recognise the fantastic things that are being done to get parents involved, particularly in primary schools. But in secondary schools, the parents try to walk away. They don't come up to the gate, school gates anymore. So me being in a playground at the beginning of, and the end of school doesn't have any impact because mummy and daddy aren't coming uh, with holding their children's hand and bringing them to the school gates. Dion Peters, you are a parent. You've got uh, four children, three of them at school. Do, do you welcome parent power? I do. I do. I've actually um, joined a maths class in my children's school, so I understand the homework that's actually coming back. And I feel it's a very good thing when schools embrace parents. It's very necessary. I'm a bit wary of schools that don't embrace parents because they're my children. I want to know what's going on. So do you not recognise the, the, the substantial minority that, uh, that Terry's talking about who abuse parent power? Oh, I've, se <laughs> I've seen them. I've seen them, but um, I don't feel that schools should shy away from embracing parents because I feel that the majority of parents who do involve themselves in schools really want good for their children and they want to import into the other children in the school. I recently had the opportunity of taking an assembly in my children's school and the children loved it, and it was, it was really very positive. And have you ever felt the need to challenge a teacher for, for behaving, I don't know, unfairly? I have, I have, and I was very disappointed in the way in which it was handled. In fact, I removed my children from that school because if I, as a parent, cannot have faith in the, in the, the system that the schools have in place, then I can't trust my children to be there. I can't, so I had to remove my children. When parents have challenged um, things at your school, if, if they have, Terry, I'm not, I'm not sure that they have, but uh, how do you respond? Um, they, they do challenge them, and we're all human beings as well. Teachers, head teachers, school associate staff are all people, and we don't always get it right. And so if people challenge it and they've got a legitimate challenge, then it's up to the school leadership to actually make sure that uh, challenge is accepted and apologies are made where, where necessary. And I've sat in on meetings where I personally apologise to parents for things that have gone wrong in the school, uh, but I never get it the other way around. I never get a parent coming to me and saying, I'm sorry, I was wrong on that particular occasion, because those sort of parents are never wrong, and actually they, most of the time they are. I, I mean, it's, if we can involve those parents at an earlier stage than the complaint, if they can be there when the rules are being set up, if they can be there when the decisions are made on what goes on, then you may get less conflict further down the line. And I, I know what you're talking about, and I've met they the same They have that parents. opportunity. They can become parent elected governors, they can put their name on that ballot paper, and they can have a say. But they choose not to because they're not prepared to, because well, they'd rather complain. Well, Eleanor you, Joseph, I, you I have been a parent, a parent governor. governor. Yes. I was a parent governor both at my children's primary schools and up until quite recently at the secondary school, but I have recently resigned because um, I felt that even being on the governing body um, of the secondary school, and I was on it for th three or four years, 
I'm not stupid, but the 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 thing that was mentioned on the on the tape earlier, you know, all these the the way they speak and uh, ratify this and H O this and all letters to to the to the ordinary parent, you, it's not accessible. You don't understand what they're talking about. And also, I do think that there's a very very big divide between primary school and secondary school. And once you get to secondary school, it's a whole different. Um, experience uh, to do with parent power mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it um, you know you do pick them up from the school gate you do only deal with one teacher um, and the head and whatever you get to secondary school big secondary school you're dealing with ten teachers individual subjects um, you know this one doesn't know what that one's doing and it's a bit like watching an advert for the bank you know and how marvelous it all is but we really all know that when you ring the bank it's not like that at all and I think that there's this divide between perception and reality. What, what my experience as a parent is and what you're telling me doesn't always match up. And we do need, I think the, the council thing is a good idea. I do think that parents need to be listened to. That doesn't mean they're going to get their way, but they need to be listened to. I think that's a not. really important comment. I, I'm, I'm quite happy that we listen to parents in my school, but they don't always get their yeah. own way. And the difficulty is when they don't get their own way, they feel they should. Now, we, we do parental questionnaires every two years. We do student questionnaires. We do staff questionnaires. We do all of that issue. We have uh, individual uh, ad hoc parent forums. We call parents in. We involve parents in consultation on, on contentious issues. They're, they're very heavily involved, but you don't need a parent council to do all of that. Mm. Dion. Well, um I say again, I just, I, I, I just think it's more positive than negative to have parents mm. involved in the school. I feel that the, the type of parents who are more troublemaking tend to not really want to involve themselves in schools. They, they don't really. And isn't that, isn't that problematic? I mean, are there certain groups of parents in society who are um, more interested in this kind of thing than others? Uh, Americans would say that, you know, they've, they've got issues. <laughs> they have issues of their own. Um, a lot of um, there's a lot of single parents. Um, there's a lot of different issues that ha people have going on, and you know they don't have forums to really let their frustrations out. And you just see them just go berserk in the playground, and you just think, well, where's this come from? Number one, it should never be going on in front of children. So you just think, well, where? What is the problem? What is the real problem? You know. So I, I still stand by. But, but also, what you said, Terry, about they can become a parent governor, it's not everybody that's got the confidence to be a parent governor. And most, parent, and most governing bodies are of a certain type of parent. That's right. um, and you don't get a cross-section, and they're not encouraged to come along. And if they are, they're, I mean, I actually felt terribly patronised at times by my governing body because, oh, my God, I didn't know what they were talking about. And, you, you know, you don't feel able, unless you're quite thick-skinned like I am, to say, well, excuse me, hang on, what, what are you saying? I'm sorry that I'm holding up the proceedings, but I don't know what you're talking about. And I think there are, um, you know, I mean, I, my parents were immigrants, and I think there are lots of people who have come here who don't speak English as a, uh, you know, it's not their first language, and even those that do, it's, it's, they feel terribly intimidated. And that it's a less formal thing, like a some kind of talking shop where people can just discuss matters and you know, would be good and, and I do think that so, as long so let's as have coffee mornings let's not have fine, parent but people are at let's work they can't have coffee mornings that's one of the problems Tom, at work. Tom, Tom, Tom. Can, can, can you argue for a parent council I mean the idea is that every school what you call it I yes, don't think I it matters what you call it I mean we can call it a coffee morning if, if you yeah. want but I mean let's call it a parent council let's um, let's get parents in to discuss whether Jamie Oliver should do the school dinners in the canteen. Um, you know, if we can have parents talking about these things with teachers, uh, and if children can see parents and teachers talking together about what's going to happen, not what's already happened. Tell me, doesn't that advantage articulate middle class parents yes. over others? Uh, I, think, um, I, I think it's better to do it and try to get everybody involved than to not do it because at the moment on, only you know only some people could could come to those parent councils i think we need to invite everybody in and open those up as but far as possible what do you really what are you going to try and achieve what do you really want to achieve by bringing parents in the, the only reason i want to get parents involved in the work that goes on in school because i want them to be in their classroom working with their children to un understand it and you said it earlier i want to know how those kids my kids learn maths mm -hmm. so get them in the maths classroom and and have that opportunity
Now, we've been running some programs where we've been inviting parents in. Very few parents have taken up, probably because they're slightly intimidated by the whole mm. process, mm. because they, they probably didn't have a fantastic experience as children on their own. So we've, we've done some evening sessions and we're doing some Saturday sessions and we're saying, come and work with your child who's underachieving in their particular subject and we will take you through that three hours of work and we'll have some cream cakes. But that's much more effective in terms of raising standards and improving the quality of learning experience and helping parents and it, understand. And it doesn't threaten the authority of the, of, of the teacher? Not at all, because the teacher's still got the control. The teacher's still the professional. I don't go and tell my doctor what's wrong with me. I ask him. And I don't tell my teacher what's, what I should learn. I ask them. And I think that's, that we have to maintain that professional dialogue. We're, we're the experienced professional people. We understand how children learn much better than most parents. Do you parents. agree with that, Dion? The buck really stops I, with the teacher. Uh, I, well, I respect teachers. I mean, I've got four children, and anyone that can take a class of 25 to 30 kids, I take my hat off to them. <laughs> but, um, again, I would say they're my children, so I, I really, for example, um, I want to know exactly what is being taught to them as far as sex education is concerned. Now, my eldest child is only 10, so that's all to come for me um, in secondary school. But, you know, I, I want to be able to have a say. If I really don't want a specific thing taught to my children, I want to be able to have that say and for it to be respected. I feel as though teachers and parents are on the same side. They're on the same side. I think anybody who doesn't realise they're on the same side, but there's a problem there. You want to pick and choose what their children learn. So they we don't have though. a national curriculum anymore. We don't have statutory no, no, no. guidance I, I, on sex education, <laughs> careers education. You can pick and choose. It just no, doesn't work. we just work. want to know how you do it. No, no I want to, to pick and, no, I don't to want to pick and choose everything. But I have my own views, and there's some things that I just don't want my children to be um, taught about by other people. There's some things that I would rather have the opportunity to speak to my children about myself. Be unless, before something is put in place, unless the parents get to see, this is what we're going, for specific subjects, not maths, English, art, not things like that. For specific subjects, I would like to know, in fact, personally, I'll approach the school myself anyway, and I will say, <coughs> what, what, um, what are you going to teach my children? How are you going to teach them this subject? But if subject? you don't like the way they're teaching sex education, what would you do about it? Um, I would ask for my children not to be um, taught that. So what are they going basically. to do during that time that mm. they normally have sex I'll education? Teach I'll teach them. You'll go into the school? I'll teach them. When I, I had to remove I, my see, children. See, I don't agree with that because I think that's a slippery slope of everybody picking and choosing and there'd be kids sitting everybody all over the... Everybody doesn't, though. Everybody no, everybody doesn't, doesn't but that's but what you're will. saying. I, I, look, again, I'll say they're my children and yeah. I feel as though I should have the choice. My if you children, want that much choice, you have the choice already. You can yeah. educate them yourself. Let, let's look at another specific point in the white paper. We will ensure, it says, that parents receive regular, meaningful reports on how the... Uh, children are doing. How would you interpret that, Tom? More Once again, teachers. any good school is already doing that. I mean, I don't think it's terribly controversial. I, I, I think that regular meaningful reports already go out in, in schools I've been in. Um, the schools I've taught at and the schools I've visited uh, supply regular meaningful reports they're they're even monitored you know they'll be they'll be they'll be looked at checked over by heads of department and you know those reports are already meaningful and they go out I, I don't think it's a controversial is that section your experience, of the white paper. Dion? it is and also um, I mean I'm not working full-time so I can go in mm -hmm. and I can and I do go to the teachers just as I'm taking my children out of the class and say any problems today was that okay and I will always sit my children down at the end of the day how was your day what did you learn did you have any problems? What about the idea of uh, uh, school governors dominated by parents who set up a school, Terry? Would that appeal to you? I'm, I'm not sure as I would necessarily want to work in one of those schools uh, <laughs> because I think that those particular people might be motivated in a particular way uh, and want to control everything that goes on. So I think there is a danger with that. But I think if, if a group of parents want to get together and, and organise a trust uh, and set up one of the new trust schools, I'm all for it. But I probably wouldn't apply for it myself as the head. Would you have a go at that? No. I, I, I have very strong beliefs that, that what we're doing is totally wrong. I actually believe that there should be one type of school called school, and it should be boys, girls, mixed. There should be no religious schools. This is, this is, it's just getting absolutely ridiculous. All children should go to school together. That will have a knock-on effect on the whole community because, I mean, I would actually abolish private schools. I just wouldn't have it, these people in these little bubbles. And I would actually have all of those... 
uh, upper middle class, whatever you call them these days, people going to school and therefore the, the, we would all go to school together, we would all live in a community well, and have society and all the rest of it. There's an example of parent power. Well, rich, but, rich, that's that's rich government rich. power, that's not me. Here's our problem though, I, we no longer have the small community in which everybody knows the teacher exactly. and what I want is I want exactly. all the parents to know the teacher. I would like to, 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 to know and meet all of the parents mm. that are, of, whose, whose children I teach because then it's much easier to teach those children. Mm. Including the aggressive ones, the, the bullies. Well, yeah. you, get, you get all yeah. sorts and I'd rather meet them before they were aggressive than after yeah, because absolutely. it's much yeah. harder to be nasty to somebody you've had a conversation with and agreed with than it is to, to, to turn up at a school and say, oh, what have you been doing after the child has passed it on from a very one-sided viewpoint? You know, what's and gone it can on? be really beneficial to have an argument with a parent about an issue to do yeah. with their child's education yeah. as long as by the end of the meeting you've got some consensus and you know where you're going forward. So, Terry, what's the key to making parent power work? I think parents need to get involved in schools. What they do in primary schools, they need to do in secondary schools. We need to try and engineer opportunities for parents to get involved with the learning experience because that's what schools are about. They're about helping children to be good learners. And we need to get those people, those older people, working with their own children and then taking that back to home because we only see them for six hours a day. Mm. That The rest of the time, they're at home. Let their yeah. parents have that influence at so home. So you would encourage Dion to get involved in the secondary school? Absolutely, once and I think she'll find it very difficult. Result. It's, it's, yes, yes. it's a totally different experience. Yes. As a parent, you, you all of a sudden, they come home and you say to them, rather than the teacher, did you have any problems, you say, oh, how was school today? Cool. Yeah. Do you have any problems? No. Let's start asking questions, yeah. what did you learn today? And but, they come a blank, that's because they go through adolescence. But, yeah. but if you really force the issue, you can actually get a really good dialogue. The with White Paper's children. aim, it says, it starts by saying, is the aim is to transform our school system so that every child receives an excellent education, what you, uh, I don't know, what we're asking for, whatever their background and wherever they live. Do you think parent power will help achieve that aim? No. No, but parent no. involvement will. If you get parents involved, you can achieve that aim. I think, I think upper middle class, whatever you want to call them, professional, whatever you want to call it, parents are absolutely so scared of the state system. Um, and that's a lot it, it, it due to the, to the media and the league tables and, and most parents to, oh, you know, I want my Johnny to go to this school because it scored this on the league table without actually having a thought process of saying, well, actually, perhaps that school didn't do so well because that school is in that area. And actually, a lot of the children that are going there are children that, you yeah. know, they can don't I, have a thought can process. Can I just say, I, I mean, my sister's just finished her master's um, and she went to a school in um, Broccoli. I don't know if you I won't name names. Mm. She went to a school in Broccoli that is not generally thought to be high on the league. Yeah. But um, my mum's always raised us to be lovers of education. So, but she, so she did really well out of it. She did really well because she had that mindset instilled in her. So that's why I feel that parents, it, it starts from when you're small. It doesn't just start as soon as you go we to school. We will talk on, but that's where we end this talking point. My thanks to all our guests for joining in the debate. We're back later this month with more debate and argument on another talking point that matters to teachers. Till then, goodbye.